welcome back to my channel gems and welcome back to yet another murder mystery podcast i do trust that those of you who would have listened to my last murder mystery podcast caribbean series you would have learned um something new about caribbean murders and that you would have enjoyed the content even though you know it's not content that we would like to have existed but it is um, today we're going to look at another interesting um, murder mystery and it has to do with a guy by the name of Lewis Hutchinson and he was known as the mad doctor of Edinburgh Castle and they also described him as Jamaica's first recorded serial killer. Our day murder mystery today is very interesting because of the way that Hutchinson um, acquired and killed his victims. It's very strange to think about it, the manner in which he committed his crimes and it went on for so long without being... I mean it was there in the public but it seems almost as though they refuse to acknowledge that he was killing these people. Anyway, let's get into the murder mystery podcast for today. Not long after Hutchinson had moved to Jamaica in the 1760s, people who traveled to the area that he resided in, they began to disappear. And this is where everything started when Hutchinson landed in Jamaica and then suddenly all of these people started to disappear one by one. Now Hutchinson was thought to have been born in Scotland in 1733. He was trained in medicine and then he moved to Jamaica a little before he turned the age of 30. He decided that he wanted to live in the Caribbean and he chose Jamaica. Hutchinson purchased an estate in the parish of St. Anne and the area that he resided was not very populated or he moved from uh, from all the popular places in the parish to an unpopulated area and it is believed that all of the cattle that he reared on his um area of dwelling he stole every single one of the cattle there now hutchinson's castle was built by him on his land and he would then name it the Edinburgh Castle and if you do some digging online you can see that the remains of the castle is still there and some gruesome things like um, the place where they would hang people and so on it's still there so remnants of that is still in Jamaica in the parish of St. Anne's travelers who would head from St. Anne's Bay towards Kingston would have to pass by Hutchinson's castle and it was then that he would either pick them off with a single gunshot or he would lure them into his place of dwelling with food and refreshments and entertainments. I guess when people are traveling you know they would get tired and then he would invite them for a cool drink or something to eat before they would move on and them thinking that you know well this is a genuine person who just wants to help they would go with him but little did they know he was going to kill them afterwards now Hutchinson owned slaved or enslaved people and he purchased them from all over but even though he owned them he would brutalize them and terrorize them he also um, had his slaves dispose of the bodies of the people that he would kill so this guy was very much a psycho so they spoke of Hutchinson drinking the blood of his victims and this was before he dismembered them so he would drain them of their blood drink their blood and then dismember their bodies uh, it was said that or it was found that there was a sinkhole on his estate which became known as Hutchinson's Hole and it is here where Hutchinson commanded his slaves to force throw the bodies of his victims into that hole so you can only imagine how many people were in there after they were brutally murdered by Hutchinson now a little background information Jamaica was made an English colony from 1655 
However, it was made a British colony in 1707 and it gained its independence in 1962. Now, in the year 1770 or in the 1770s, where Hutchinson had his error of killing, there were thought to be over 200,000 black slaves in that country. So this is to show you how many black people were on the island at the time when Hutchinson was creating all of this havoc. People who could started avoiding Hutchinson's castle because they were afraid of him and rumors started to spread of the crimes that Hutchinson was involved in and they circulated all around the parish. But things were only taken seriously when Hutchinson shot and killed a soldier by the name of John Callender. And this was done publicly. Hutchinson realized, well, you know what? I am in trouble because I killed somebody who is a part of the law. Lewis Hutchinson tried to make a run for it after killing John Callender. He was headed towards a old harbor and he tried to leap onto a ship, but he was captured by the Royal Navy. Hutchinson was made to stand trial. However, sadly, he was only reportedly given one murder charge despite the many that he was accused of. So only one murder he was charged of despite all of these people that he would have killed. The stories reported by Hutchinson's slaves allegedly said that there was a group of men involved in the murders and not just Lewis Hutchinson himself. So it's alleged that Lewis Hutchinson was not just the sole mastermind behind these gruesome murders, but he had a group of men who helped him. Hutchinson was found guilty and then he was later hanged in the Spanish Town Square in the year 1773. It is not known how many people Lewis Hutchinson would have killed. But interestingly, for the three watches and a large amount of clothes were found at his home. Now, interestingly, in Jamaica or on a website, I saw that they warned the locals and visitors to stay away from the estate or the castle as people around there still believe that ghosts of the murderer's victims roam the estate. Because of the tales of Hutchinson's slaves, their tales of mistreatment and his reputation for doing evil he became a legend and this reputation that he built up for villainy was such that no one wanted to go near him or even his castle if they could avoid it therefore there was great hesitation and fear took root amongst those officials who could serve him with a warrant so i'm guessing that all of this was the reason why he was never arrested because people were so afraid of what he was capable of doing um, time continued to pass and Hutchinson was still free not even his brutal and unwarranted attack on his unarmed neighbor Dr. Hutton which caused the good doctor who was an en route to join his family to a trip on a trip to England to wear a silver plate in his head for the remainder of his life so Dr. Hutton had to wear a silver plate. I am not sure what he would have done to Dr. Hutchinson, but for the rest of his life, he had to wear a silver plate. After a little digging, I found out that John Callender was actually a brave soldier who wanted to bring Hutchinson in um, after seeing, you know, how much crime he would have committed. But it was because of his act of bravery that he lost his life. So he attempted to take Hutchinson in and that is when he lost his life. I'm just trying to figure out if back in that time they had guns and so on. Why is it that no one ever shot him? I mean, they had an, a whole army and it was just one man. Why is it that nobody never shot him? During Hutchinson's trial, the stories of his slaves were substantiated and it was further revealed that Hutchinson had not carried out his evil acts alone. The existence of a neighboring group of perverted minds was also revealed. 
A few members, such as planter James Walker and Roger Maddox, were tried, found guilty, and condemned to death for their own parts in the murder of a farmer by the name of William Lickley and schoolmaster Timothy Cronin. It is said that along with Roger Maddox and Lewis Hutchinson, Maddox's wife, Dorcas, a, a Miss Susanna Cole, and a Miss Elizabeth Thomas watched schoolmaster Cronin's death by strangulation while pinioned in stocks. Cronin's watch and seal were later found in Elizabeth Thomas's possession. She was tried, pled not guilty, and received judgment as such. Hutchinson, however, was not so lucky. Although he insolently tried to enter a plea of not guilty and was defended by one of the island's most esteemed law lawyers, he was tried, found guilty, and condemned to death by hanging in the Spanish town square, like I would have said. The, record is, the records of his trial stand in the National Archives. Defiant even in death, Hutchinson left funds to inscribe his two-line epitaph on his marble tombstone. Their sentence, pride and malice I defy, despise their power, and like a Roman die. His wishes, as befitting the mark of such a man, were ignored, and I totally agree with them. He did not care about killing those people, because if you're going to leave money behind to write such a despicable piece on your tombstone, then I totally agree with them that they shouldn't have done it, and they didn't. Finally, today the ruins of the Edinburgh Castle still stand silently, betraying no hint of the acts of the evil that took place centuries ago. And the actions of the mad master of Edinburgh Castle, like those of another Macabre character, Anne Palmer, the White Witch of Rose Hall, live on in the annals of Jamaican history. And with that, guys, that brings me to the end of today's murder mystery podcast. I do hope that you would have enjoyed the little piece that I put together. I'm trying to keep them short so that you guys will listen to them longer. Thank you to all those who had listened to the last podcast. And I do hope that many more listen to this one. Until the next one, guys. Bye.